Stephanie Milkey here, a.k.a. Keto Mom, or often called mom, sis, Steffi, daughter, wife, aunt, and friend. Just like many of you, I carry a lot of titles. My favorite title is mom. I should probably say wife, which takes a lot of my time. But let's be honest. If you want to do something and do it well, you will make the time for it. Commitment is hard because we find ourselves overcommitted. But when you practice prioritizing, you will find out what is actually important and what you can let go. With the Keto Mom Podcast, you will learn together how to manage our time, commit to the most important things in life, and I will equip you with the tools you need to feel qualified each step of the way. My name is Stephanie Milkey, and welcome to the Keto Mom Secrets Podcast. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. My name is Stephanie. We're going through the five-second rule like we have been for the last probably couple weeks, uh, and we're almost done with the book. It's been a great book. It is a great tool to help you on your journey to become the best version of you. And if you're brand new here and you're like, what are you talking about? Post new below. I'd love to get to know you. So I often say that your thinking, the power of your thinking, understanding and having awareness around the things that you say, the things that you think really should even come before I help teach you about food. You might go, uh, just give me a recipe. I will. I will give you recipes. This page has had recipes and keto tips and tricks and different things to help you on your journey. You can always go to ketomomsecrets.com. You can click on recipes, how to get started. You can grab some ketones. We've got lots of different fun trial packs. So there's lots of things I want to help you with. And number one is I want to help you with your mindset. So today we're talking about the five second rule. And if you have not been following along, again, you can go to ketomomsecrets.com, click on book club, and you can go through all of the, the lives that we've done about the book and all of the other books. Now, really quick, where you, tell me where you're tuning in from. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Kathleen. Tell me where you're tuning in from. I am tuning in from beautiful Minnesota, and I say that because actually this is the best time of year. From now until August, we probably live in the best place because it's not too hot and it's not cold. It is perfect. So you will find most people that live in Minnesota very happy right now because it's it's a great time to be here. Oh, good morning, Lynn. Good morning. All right. So the five-second rule, just the very basic overview. The five-second rule is a tool to when maybe you want to sleep in and hit the snooze button, you want to skip the gym, you want to grab the donut, you want to ignore a conversation that needs to be had. Uh, it helps you in five seconds do what you know you need to do, but then you decide your, your mind starts telling you, wait till tomorrow, you're too tired, excuses, right? So five, four, three, two, one, this book is about how to take action. And so I would really highly recommend that you get the book. It's a really great, it's a great tool. I often tell people there are things that you can do and things that you can, whether you have an awareness or physical things that are like tools in your tool belt to help you on your journey to success. And right now you're on the Keto Mom page. So right now you're probably like, all right, Stephanie, help me be successful in my fat loss. And I would say, all right, let's start reading. Let's start working on your mindset. So the five second rule, how it can help you on your fat loss is five, four, three, two, one, get up and go to the gym. Five, four, three, two, one, drive past the drive through. Five, four, three, two, one, before you start thinking or ex making excuses, put down the donut, uh, go for a walk, grab your ketones, put a smile on your face and don't be so crabby. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so today's chapter, chapter 15, is about building confidence. And so it's interesting. I actually, yesterday, and I'll share it again today, but I shared a podcast by Ed Milet, and it was all about how to build self-confidence. And it was interesting because I was listening to that again this morning, and then I was reading this chapter that was all about building confidence. And here's the very beginning of the chapter. She says this, a big mistake people make is thinking that confidence is a matter of personality. Confidence just means that you believe in yourself, your ideas, and your capabilities. Anyone can learn how to become more confident. It's not a personality trait. It is a skill. So 
I think oftentimes people might use this as an excuse. Well, I'm not confident or that's not me or I don't have that. That wasn't born in me. Like I am, sometimes people will say, they even use the, I'm an introvert. I, I can't do it. Here's something that in the podcast I thought was really great uh, that Ed Milet said. And here's the phrase is this. Hold on. Let me get, let me get to my notes. You guys should write this down. I actually think it's super powerful or just hear it, internalize it, and then try to figure out if this is something that you have used as an excuse. He goes, our external results, the things that you want to achieve, will never exceed our internal identity. How do you believe in yourself? How do you see yourself? What are the words that you're speaking over yourself? So our external results, if you're wanting fat loss or to feel better or to feel stronger, Whatever you're wanting, that vision board, the goals that you have written down, the things that you're hoping for, will never exceed our internal identity. So part of really the Keto Mom page has turned into, I need to help people understand that you have value, that you are worthy, and we need to start shifting this so that you believe it and that you build your own self-confidence so that you can achieve those goals that you're wanting to achieve. Because if you are trying to do these little habits and you're, and you're like, I'm trying, I am trying to go to the gym, I'm trying to lose weight, I'm trying to eat healthy, but on the inside you're constantly beating yourself up, it's not going to work. And so I love how she says, she says, confidence in yourself is built through acts every single day. It's little things. So it's confidence is created by small things you do every single day that build trust in yourself. So in the book, the author talks about building trust in you. In the podcast that I was just listening to, he says this. He goes, uh, we rarely do more than we believe that we are worthy of or that we deserve. So there's things that will stop us because we beat ourselves up. We don't believe that we can. We don't believe that we're worthy of it. He goes, repetition, I'm sorry, repeating, I'm sorry, what does that say? I have not very great. Oh, here we go. Um, here's where self-confidence is built. And if you don't personally believe in yourself, it goes back to that you're not going to get the results that you want. It's going to be based on your internal identity. He goes, here's how you build self-confidence. She says it right here in the book, right? It's doing little things every single day. This is the key that builds trust in yourself. In the podcast, he says the same thing. It's keeping promises. It's promises that you keep to yourself. So oftentimes we might think that, you know, it's, it's easy to blame, shame, and justify. It's easy to blame your past, shame other people, make excuses, point fingers. When if you really truly want to hit some of these goals, you've got to look inward and go, Am I beating myself up? Am I not keeping the promises to myself? Do I have these goals of getting up and going to the gym and, and then I self-sabotage myself because I tell myself, I don't want to, I'm not worthy, I can't, I'm not strong enough. All of those things, right? It starts right here. So uh, here's another powerful thought from the podcast. It says, I can control my activity and my attitude. Those are things you can control, your actions and your attitude, your actions and your EQ. If your confidence is based on, okay, I'm sorry. If your confidence is based on your results, self-confident, okay, here, here's the biggest thing he was saying. Listen, oftentimes people base their self-confidence and how they feel about themselves on the results that they're not getting. So if you're not seeing results, they beat themselves up. They tell them it's their fault because they haven't lost the weight. And he goes, you need to make the shift. You need to go, I am going to base my self-confidence because I know that I will achieve the goals when I believe that I can do it, not when my spouse does, not when my coworker or my mom or my, not when somebody else gives me affirmations, that's helpful. But if you truly want to achieve these goals, guess what? You have to look inward and go, Oh my goodness, I'm basing my self-worth upon myself on the results, but I'm beating myself up in my mind. 
So he goes, here's what I want you to understand. You have full control over your actions and your attitude. And those things, the small steps you do every single day will get you to want where you want to go, but you've also that's going to build your confidence. You're not going to skip and hit the snooze. If you're going to go, oh my goodness, I kept my promise to myself, right? You're going to go to the gym and you're not going to, you're not going to not go, you're going to keep your promise, you're going to go to the gym, and you're going to build your self-confidence because you did it, and you celebrate that. You're going to build your self-confidence when you keep your promises around the food and the goals you've set around food. Maybe you're working on breaking an addiction, right? All of these things will build your own self-confidence, and it comes down to making choices every day and using a tool called the five-second rule. Five, four, three, two, one, get out of bed. Five, four, three, two, one, go past the drive through. Five, four, three, two, one, put the cigarette down. Five, four, three, two, one, don't go out for the drinks. Five, four, three, two, one, don't yell at your kids. Five, four, three, two, one, make the phone call. Because you can use this tool, and as you do it, I need you to just have the awareness of your self confidence isn't based on anybody else. We're not going to blame other people or shame other people or point fingers. We're going to go, oh my goodness, I have full control of my own self confidence. And as I keep promises to myself, my self-confidence will grow. It's based on the promises that you tell yourself day in and day out, the choices that you make day in and day out. And that can be based on food or your workouts or the things that you want to achieve. Self-confidence. It's not from others. It's from yourself. And that's what this chapter was about. Five, four, three, two, one. Doing the small steps every single day. Small things are not small at all. They're the most important things and they add up. Pushing yourself to five, four, three, two, one on the small things gives you confidence to do the big things as you go. Does this make sense? I hope this is making sense. I, I like read in the mornings and I'm like, yes, this is gonna be so great. All right, last thing I'll read. Confidence builds when you do the things that affirm your sense of self particularly when they are things that, that might not be normal, I'm sorry, that you normally do, like getting up on time, speaking in front of your church, chasing, uh, it's talking about lots of different things, but these are acts of everyday courage that will build your self-confidence, doing the things that you can do. It's your action or activity, and it's your attitude. That will build your self-confidence. Ah, oh, you guys, this book is so great. And I just like to, it's great. All right, I'm going to say this, this phrase one more time that I took notes on this morning. Our external results will never exceed our internal identity. If you want external results, you've got to look inward. And who is the hardest on you? It's you, right? I was sitting listening to our pastor last night was talking about uh, the words that we say to ourselves and and she was talking about how oftentimes we take on what other people say, which we don't have to, right? I realized some of you were told things over the course of years. You're not, you're not worthy. Why would you think that you deserve that? You know, people will say, people have said things to you. I, I know that. Well, you're always going to be like this. <clears throat> so there's a part of like, you know what? You don't have to receive the words that people have said to you. Did you know that? You actually don't have to be that person. You don't have to take upon uh, those thoughts or those words or those things. You can actually go, you know what, that is not me. I'm actually going to reject that and I'm going to work on my inner self. So really a lot of this has to do with your, your like the things that you're reciting over and over again. And every time you recite something, maybe it came from somebody in the past and now you're reciting it because you believe it. You need to take that thought captive and you need to go and you need to replace that negative thought with a positive one. So if you're constantly saying, I'm not worthy, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and it might feel really awkward and it might feel like you're lying to yourself, but you need to go, I am worthy. I'm always going to be fat. You look at yourself and go, I am healthy and strong. You need to take those negative things that you're saying to yourself, replace them with a positive affirmation, and then what you're going to do is do these small steps every single day because you've promised to yourself 
that you're going to get up, you're going to go for the walk, you're going to choose the right foods. And as you keep those promises, you will see yourself start to smile, to be more of an encouragement to other people. You're going to feel incredible about yourself because you're building your your own self-confidence. And out of that, you will be able to encourage other people. Starts with self-talk. And that self-talk might have come from somebody else and you need to know that that's not true. That is a lie. You don't have to take that on anymore. You can reject it and replace it with a positive word. Even if you're like, it's so hard to say that about myself, I want you to say it. If you would want to share something below, like, I mean, I don't want you to say negative things below, but if there's one word that you're like, I would love to be more, what would that be? Or what is one word that you're like, I want to see myself as worthy, uh, beautiful, healthy? Like, what is a word that you're like, I need to cling on to this word so that I can build my self-confidence? If you'd like to share below, I'd love to know what that is. And <clears throat> excuse me, that's all I have for you today. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you. Your presence matters. Oh, I love that you guys are sharing. A lot of you are saying confidence. You guys, that's exactly what we talked about. Five, four, three, two, one. And building self-confidence comes with honoring yourself, comes with keeping the promises to yourself. I'm going to share that podcast about confidence because I thought it was super great again in my stories today. Uh, otherwise, as always, you can tune in, you can ask questions below, you can reach out with questions. Uh, I love that you said joyful. I love that. A lot of healthy, confident, joyful. All right. I'm going to find some podcasts and different things and some encouragement for you. Thanks for tuning in. I truly love to see you say good morning, hopping on uh, your presence matters. It's not fun if I'm just yapping to myself. So I hope you guys have an incredible morning and I will see you very soon. Bye.